Chorn Athletic Career Mode today. As promised, we are starting to make moves in the January transfer market. As you guys can see, it is the 31st of December, which means one more day, and there will be all sorts of changes to our squad, to be fair. We've got some lone players that are at the club right now whose parent clubs aren't happy with their game time at Charlton right now. So we're going to see probably Elliot Lee and uh, Harry Arter, players like that who are highly rated in our team. They're probably going to leave. And then we've also got, of course, Britain. I think it's just Britain who is going to join our ranks as well. In addition to that, guys, oh, I've just seen Jaden Stockley who is second on the goal scoring charts there. So 13 goals for him. But as I was going to say, guys, we have, a youth, we have a youth player unsettled and that is Shane Burns who is looking to cancel his contract because he thinks he's ready for senior football. And do you know what? With the departure probably of, of Schwartz, maybe Washington, if we do sell him, Shane Burns has quite a right, I think, to, to come to my office and say this. He's a 17-year-old, 58-rated striker with a potential that's between 77 and 91. He's Northern Irish. He's got five-star skill moves already. Potentially more of a winger, but I do want to train him as a striker because I want a nice, agile, pacey guy up front. And I think this guy fits the bill. Uh, we are working on his week for anyway, car long story short, I think Shane Burns is just going to go straight to the senior team. Welcome to the senior team, Shane Burns. By the way, I've looked at his stats, his agility, dribbling, that kind of, those kind of stats are absolutely immaculate. So without further ado, let's move this clock forward to the 1st of uh, January as you see all of those office notifications firing through and we have Wickham as well in the league to deal with who are 24th in the table. But are we going to play that game first or are we going to do some transfer stuff first? So here's the bad news, first and foremost, okay? Elliot Lee has been recalled by Luton Town. So that's unfortunate because he he played a few games and he was good for us. But uh, yeah, that's a shame. He's gone. Arta also, a 70-rated CDM, recalled by Nottingham Forest. We're now going to need a backup CDM, potentially, or at least strength in the midfield. Uh, we are... Also now Pierceless, because he's left to Hearts, Schwartzless, because he's left to Auxerre, and Watsonless, because he's left to Karlsruhe SC. Barker has also left on loan to AC Ajaccio. So we are super, super, super uh, just short of numbers, basically. We're going to need to make a few signings in this window for sure. Callum Britton does join us, and another exit in Chrissy Gunter. Wow. Okay, let's actually see what that means for our squad now. So effectively two additions for us with Burns as well. We have five reserves. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so we got Britton who is pretty much going to go straight into the right back position because he's really good for this level of football. Uh, Soiree up to a 69. That's really good. He's probably got a start ahead of Purrington at this rate, hasn't he? I don't know. Maybe not for the Wickham game, but maybe in the future. And we're going to need to convert Britain to a right back as opposed to a right wing back. But he is going to be really good for us in League One. I'm surprised that he dropped down from Barnsley in the Championship to League One. Especially as they're mid-table. Sorry, I've just checked this. Especially as they are mid-table and not too far off the playoffs. Literally like six or seven points off the playoffs. So fair play to Britain. He clearly sees the value in the long-term project at Charlton and he is going to really improve our team, which is great. It's only going to take Callum Britton six weeks to become a full-fledged right back. That's fine. That's really not bad. That means sort of by the end of January, he's going to be there or thereabouts. Maybe sort of mid-Feb, he'll be 100% ready to become an actual right back. That's fine. Now, one thing that could improve our numbers, at least, our squad depth, is that we've got a new uh, youth squad report and Cronin and Sheehan, while they're not really first team levels yet, they are only 16 and 17 respectively and they have got a potential of between 79 and 93. I won't promote them at the moment, but that is an option. Shane Burns, by the way, comes to the office and says, uh, I've been dreaming about this happening. Thanks for giving me a chance in the starting lineup, boss. I'm desperate to show everybody what I can bring to the team. The starting lineup, choose your words carefully, son. I say I know there's more to come from you, but he's not in the starting lineup yet. He's merely a reserve or a young player that is in the official senior ranks. But Shane Burns could have a really good future ahead of him. We'll see. So let's have a look at our money. So we've got £1 million. So realistically, we're probably going to have to rely on a few youth players getting promoted. And then we're, we're probably going to only buy like one player, one or two max. Ah, that's going to be interesting. We're going to have to be creative here. I'm not used to not having a financial takeover. So, wow. Okay, this is going to be tough. So I think, honestly, the areas that we want to strengthen with a first team rated player 
He's probably CDM because Dobson literally doesn't have a backup CDM now. Now Watson's gone. And centre back, we have Famo Innis. Then we have Lavelle, who's good. And then we have Alaire away, who again is good but not great for this level. So we don't want to rely on him too much, especially with the sheer amount of games that we have still being in the Papa John's Trophy and of course the league and the FA Cup as well. So yeah, we definitely need some bodies and CDM and center back, I think could be the way to go here for our 1 million pound budget. Ah, okay, so this is an interesting discovery guys. Makoto Okazaki from FC Tokyo is worth 600k he's a decently rated center back slash right back for this level and we can get him on a free so i think this is going to be worthwhile although we don't get a player immediately at least we know we're going to get a good defender for league one slash championship level in the long run so we're going to sign this guy hopefully and that will just add some more numbers to our ranks so there we go we have signed okazaki for Cholton, he is going to join us next season and he is on a 1.8k a week deal and he's on a four-year contract with us so that is a player joining us in the future but now we have to concentrate on spending our actual transfer money on someone for the here and now all right well guys i've decided for now i do want to spend a little bit more time scouting some additional players because we we had a lot we have a lot of players in the transfer hub in fact i might as well show you uh, a lot of these players there's there's some players available for us but there's not a lot of cdms here now we've just signed a center back for next season i think cdm is probably the area we need to sign someone um so these guys are pretty much all being scouted we've got some options so let's let's play a few games and then see where we are after that all right so bottom of the table wickham our next opponents guys they've got a guy called gape in midfield who hopefully leaves gape in holes for us <laughs> oh, all right okay we're gonna sim the match they've got a few tired players we've got a few tired players that we've had to get out of the squad and our new signing not new signing our new youth player burns who's number 13 oh, i don't really like that he's on the bench anyway and hopefully davison blackett taylor among Lavelle, a couple of players that have come in to the starting 11 here can play well. Of course, as well, Britton, who's our new number two, our new right back. Hopefully, he can have a great debut. One, two, remember. Let's see. Chance for Cholton. Davison, is that in? Oh, it's not. Okay, corner. In from Forster Kasky. Davison, back to Forster Kasky. Is the cross coming in? Gilby's on the edge of the box now. Is he going to shoot? He is. Goalkeeper spills it. Luckily for Wickham, it's away. Right, another chance for Cholton attacking. Come on, get on the end of that, Blackett Taylor. Does really well. Wins the ball. Back to Purrington. Back to Purrington again. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's over from Forster Kasky. Unlucky. We've had good chances so far. Three shots, none on target. We go again. Dobson. Davison. To Leco. The keeper makes another great save. Stockdale on a 7.7 .7 right now. Can we have another chance? And it's another great save from Stockdale. He's now up to an 8.1. We are bombarding the Wickham goal here. But no goal for us to show for it yet. Here's a chance. Davison, it's a goal. It's Gilby. That looked like a really good left-footed drilled finish. That's what I'm imagining, guys. Obviously, I don't actually know. But it was a knockoff from Davison, which he got onto the end of and whacked it into that bottom corner. Gilby on the score sheet, 1-0 Charlton. Maybe one more chance before the halftime whistle. Purrington linking up with Blackett Taylor. Cross comes in, Davison. It goes over his head and out from Johnny Lecco. That should be halftime in a second now. And we are one goal to the good. I do want to get Burns on if I possibly can, but I think we probably need to have a two goal lead if we do want to bring on someone like that. We've had 74% possession and we are playing a bit of a stormer right now. No chance in the game yet for Wickham. I don't want to jinx it, but I hope it stays that way. Here we go again. Gilby to Davison. Corey Blackett Taylor. Link it up with Purrington. That's a good little link up on the left. I like it. Blackett Taylor's in the box and he scores! What a goal from Blackett Taylor! He cut inside after the link up with Purrington and he's banged one in! Oh, you love to see it. Alright, here's what we're going to do then. After 60 minutes, we are going to go to the uh, subs bench and bring on Burns for Davison. And should we make another switch? Yeah, let's bring on, let's bring on Morgan for Forster Kasky as well, just because we can. So that they're going to be our two subs. Hopefully those two boys can perform well for us. Here come Wickham. Over to their number 23, which is a beater. Oh, that was a good chance for them. 69 minutes played. Those subs have now been made. So Burns and Albie Morgan both on the pitch. See if they can get involved. Burns is our number 13. I think I've already brought that up. I don't really like that. 
Is it unlucky? It is for some. Will it be for Burns? No! He's straight off the mark! Shane Burns, our Northern Irish youngster, our wonder kid, has immediately scored after being on the pitch for three or four minutes. That is exactly what you want to see, guys. He's on a 6.3, which is harsh. Let's jump to result, and it is a 3-0 win for Cholton. How is Burns on a 6.2 after scoring? I don't get that at all. He needs to be on like a 7. He scored in League 1, mate, with pretty much his first touch in a Cholton shirt. That is crazy. Anyway, 3-0 against Wickham. Great result. And they are in trouble, aren't they? Wickham Wanderers. Bottom of the table. Lost 3-0 to us. Will they survive? It remains to be seen. Next up, it's the third round of the Papa John's Trophy away against MK Dons. Wow, this is going to be tough. This is where we're going to miss those rotation players. By the way, Dobson up to an eight, a 70, sorry, rated. An 80 would be nice, wouldn't it? A 70 rated player. So he's championship ready already. And that is great. Okay, guys, we line up like that. We've got Burns up front. I'm giving him another go. We're going to sim this one as well and see how we do. We've got Claire in CDM. We've got Lavelle at the back, I think, alongside Innis. Yeah, we have. So quite a slow back too. But, you know, we've made some changes. Jaisimi's in. Burns is in. What can the boys do for us? And they are clearly a better opposition than Wickham. But we're actually still having our fair share of the attacks here as we oh, get it into Burns again. That's Matthews down the right-hand side. He's playing pretty well. All our team playing pretty well, to be honest. Come on, boys. Here we go. Put it in. Cross it, Soiree. Corner to Cholton. Nearly half-time. Forced to Kasky over it. Oh, it's away from MK. Back in. Unlucky. That's going to be nil-nil at the break. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're playing okay. More possession. Fairly even amount of shot. Well, I say that. They've had two. We've had one. Uh, but I still have faith that we can do something here. Their low block is really tricky for us to break down, especially when we've got Burns on the pitch. He is on a 6.8 for us. So maybe we could bring on our, our, our sub striker, which is Washington. I think that might help us here. Here come MK Dons. Good save from McGilvery as we look to Matt Hall. Matthews is just giving it away for no reason whatsoever. And MK come again. They are dominating the game at this point. Now another save from McGilvery. He's on a 6, 7.6. He's made a few really important saves for us. And we get it away up to Washington, who's now come on the pitch for Burns. Burns couldn't get his goal in the first hour. And now we're, we're relying on a more senior player who is involved instantly in an attack between himself and... Who's our number 10? It's Morgan, who couldn't score there. And that one also goes over. That's actually another corner. And that's a goal! Come on, it's short Claire from the Albie Morgan corner. That's what we wanted to see. 20 minutes left. And we are heading to, I guess this must be like the semi-final now, maybe, of the uh, EFL Papa John's Trophy. Come on, this could be a really good result. Oh, no, 87 minutes played. Here come MK, lots of space. Here they go. MK in the box, great defending. That was Soiree getting there. But we have got an airway on the pitch, which makes me a little bit nervous. We've done enough, though. We have done enough. And that is full time, 90 minutes played. Final whistle goes, and it is a 1-0 away win. Huge win for Cholton for the potential for some silverware. And those must be the rest of the Southern games, which means we're in the semi-finals now of the Southern bit of the uh, EFL trophy. And therefore, I think we've got three games left and we could win it. That's huge. FA Cup action next against Cambridge. And it's FA Cup action now, guys. More cup action for us. We're still in trophies in cup competitions come January. That's huge for Charlton. I don't remember ever this being the case in the first League One season. Anyway, it's the FA Cup. Big prestigious trophy, obviously, in England. So we are going to go full strength pretty much as our, our first choice League 11. Um, and we're going to quick sim it. It's against Cambridge. Who knows what's going to happen here? It's going to be a 2-1 loss. That's tough to take, actually. I didn't expect that. Ironside scored for them. Lovely name, Ironside. Well, actually, lovely is the wrong description. It's a great name. It's a cool name. Uh, and for us, on the score sheet was Gilby. Ratings-wise, we didn't play well. We really didn't play well there. That's a shame. So two transfer offers have come in, guys. One for Jayasimi for 1.8 million, which is actually a really good offer. <sighs> I think for now I have to reject this because Jayasimi is a really good option for us and I think he'll end up being more expensive if we do want to sell him in the future. Craig McGilvery for 1 million, again, tricky. Possible though? Maybe. I mean, these are the keepers we have currently being scouted. I mean, Bursic's worth 2 million, so we couldn't get him. I mean, I think they're all too expensive. I don't think we can get the turnaround we really need if we're going to sell him for just a million pounds. So therefore, we are going to have to go back in there and reject that one as well. Unless we could get like 1.5. Should 
Should we just try and get 1.5 for him? And if that just on a fluke happens, then it could be good for us, maybe? Let's go 1.6, because I really don't really want him to go. They say 1 million, nah, do you know what? I'm rejecting that, no way. McGilvery stays. Oh, okay, okay, so we can we can actually sign Elliot Lee on a pre-contract agreement for next season. I actually rate him, like, as a backup player for the championship, I actually rate that as well. Again, he's 27, he can grow a bit, probably up towards a 70, and if we need to, we can sell him for that value you, you see there of 1.2 million. So I think this is worth doing. Elliot Lee, yeah, I like him. And there we go, guys, we settled for a three, 0.6k wage and we settled on a four-year contract so Elliot Lee does join us but that's another player that joins next season so we still need a player or maybe two for the here and now okay so let's give this one more go guys next up Cheltenham Town in the league as you can see they're 16th we're still top with the game in hand it's risky business here I'm not gonna lie but we are gonna quick sim it please let's get the win here come on now and it's a 3-2 win that is very good stuff for Stokaski, Claire and Gilby on the score sheets Perry and Thomas getting some goals that ultimately mean nothing for Cheltenham Town that's wicked I love that so I decided we didn't have enough money to sign the players that we kind of need to slash want to sign here for the future of Charlton Athletic okay so we have sold Connor Washington for quite a good deal actually 1.05 million which gives us 725k more to our transfer budget the other player I genuinely am considering selling here is Alex Gilby so Werder Bremen a big club in Germany have come in for 1.35 million for Alex Gilby now I'm considering this one because we can push that up towards one and a half million as you can see on the right hand side there and two because if you actually go into Gilby's development plan in the squad hub which I'll show you guys right now you can see that it actually doesn't take him or sorry rather it does take him quite a long time to get up to a 70 rated so he's not going to be worth much more money for us in the future he's he's getting older i don't think we're going to see the same 75 rated gilby as we saw in the fifa 21 career mode guys so i'm considering it but i have replacements in mind so just trust the process okay guys all right one more game to get through i think until we actually make some moves here it's going to be against crew so charlie kirk against his old club we draw it 1-1 not the best result Again, we are struggling with squad depth right now, guys. If you actually have a look, A, at the league table, you can see that we are top, and B, at our squad, we are really struggling. We've down, we're down now to four reserves, guys. Four reserves in the club at the moment, plus maybe more exits on the way. This is tough. Oh, okay, so I found a really good option here as a backup for George Dobson. It's Aaron Gunnarsson, who is the Icelandic legendary player of the EFL if I do say so myself I think he played for uh, Cardiff for quite a while very good player I think we can go and sign him for free and that that could be huge that could save us a lot of money and we can go and maybe buy one or two more really good players here he wants to be an important squad member that's okay it means he won't expect to play every game but he expects to play quite a few we'll go for two years hopefully he accepts that he does we'll disregard any release clause nonsense he wants 4.1k plus an appearance bonus. We'll get rid of the bonus. 4.1k is a lot for us, but I'm happy to do it for someone like Aaron Gunnarsson as a backup. That's really good. Okay, that's beautiful stuff. So we have a, a free transfer of that quality in our squad now. That's great. Happy with that. And it's Fleetwood Town next in the league. 18th. We're playing all the teams at the bottom of the league. We're still three points clear of Ipswich. I think we'll probably need to bring Jayasimi in for this one for fitness purposes. But besides that, we're looking pretty dandy, to be honest. Oh, I tell you what, we'll bring Suarez in as well. And then that is all we're going to do. Actually, shall we bring Gunnarsson into the onto the bench nah i think we'll leave it at that guys all right let's get into this game let's quick sim another one do we get the win against fleetwood come on charlton come on charlton it's a 2-1 win for stakaski and jayasimi score for us morton scores for fleetwood but it's another three points in the league that is huge somehow we are doing the business on the pitch despite having a significantly depleted squad in terms of numbers also brilliant news callum Britton ready to become a right back his overall rating does not change but we can now focus on him becoming a wide back get that crossing up get that passing up that slide tackling and stamina as well that defensive work rate and Callum Britton will hopefully become a really good player for us in the championship if we get there hopefully we do oh Alex Gilby has been sold officially that kind of hurts my heart 
but I think in the long term we have to think of what's good for the club and I think that was the right move. We've also had a transfer offer in for Albie Morgan. It's always Turkey that are interested in Albie Morgan. I don't know why that is. Um, for now, we're not going to reply to that. I don't think we really want to sell him, to be honest. So here's the plan, guys. £2.79 million. I think we can make a really good capture with this money. And this is the man we wanted, guys. Luke Jeffcott, 21 years old. Striker for Plymouth, of course. Scored against us earlier on in the series to equalise for Plymouth and steal points off us. 2.1 to 2.3 million, which is about as much money as we have. I think that we have to go for this guy to replace Connor Washington and Schwartz who left. And do you know what? Honestly, if, he, if, if we sign him, there's a chance in my mind that we could sell Stockley and use that money to get someone else. But I haven't thought that far ahead yet. And here he is, the man himself has signed for Charlton. Jeffcott is going to wear our number 17 shirt. You can see there, 1.8 million. We got him for a bit of a bargain and they Im immediately accepted it. So I think I maybe could have gone in for slightly less there, but we went under his market value, which was 2 million, and we still managed to get him 21 years old, a 2.4K a week contract, and that number 17 shirt, I think, suits him. He's going to join the club and he is now going to compete with Stockley for that starting position up front. Wow, only three days left of January, guys. This has absolutely flown by. Absolutely flown by. We've won most of our games apart from that crew draw on the, on the 19th. And then we lost in the cup on the 8th as well. I actually feel like, although it's a huge game, I am going to just sim the Portsmouth game, we've lost it 3-1. I think we're still top, but that's a tough loss. And it is now deadline day. Well, I didn't think we were gonna do this all in one episode, but it looks like it's gonna be a very transfer heavy episode. We might not even get any games played in this episode. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we still wanna do a little bit of business here. I don't know how likely we are to do that, but we're gonna try. Right, it's all kicking off. All right, let me update you. So first and foremost, I tried to get Miles Pert Harris, he's an attacking midfielder on loan in a loan to buy move, okay? He turned down the opportunity to come to us. He's a Brentford player, by the way, 67 rated CAM. I think he's 19 years old. So it would have been a really good deal for us. We have, however, after suffering that rejection, gone back into the transfer hub and found a certain player, let me get to him, called Bilal Benkhedim from AS Saint Etienne. So we've got a loan to buy off a guy on for him. It's a short term loan and then we buy him for 1.4 million. I don't actually know how good this player is, but he plays for a good club and his value seemed to be about 1, 1 to 1.5 million. So I'm hoping he's like a 65-ish rated CAM and he could be a good option for us. The only issue is we have to advance time to see if he accepts us or rejects us and we're only two hours left of transfer deadline day at this point. Our squad is very small. So if we don't get this done, we've lost Gilby. We've kept Stockley, by the way, so we've got some good options actually up front. Actually, having a lot of strikers might make Burns suffer, actually. He might not get as many chances as he might have hoped. However, I think we might have to dip into the, the, the youth market again and start promoting some youth players just to bulk our squad out a little bit. At least we've got quality in our team. But I think now we literally just have to hope that, um, is his name Benk Hedim? I think Benk Hedim joins us, which we'll find out in a second. Otherwise, we're just left with what we got, guys. We've made some good signings for next season and it looks like the loan's been declined. Okay, wait, we have an hour left. We still have an hour left. Ah, uh, okay, this is a risk, guys. I didn't really want to do this, but I think because we've got an hour left, we're going to have to dip into the free agents market. I don't know if this guy's any good. I mean, his stats there indicate to me that he's pretty decent. I mean, he's got pretty good sprint speed, pretty good agility, acceleration. I think this guy's probably like an up, like a 65, 66. And I think hopefully, looking at those stats, we can probably convert him to a center mid or CAM. So it's not what I wanted to do, but just for squad depth purposes, I am going to sign Roland Varga. So we're going to get him on a two year deal. Oh, by the wages, he looks like he could be a bit better than a 65. Right, let's get rid of the goals bonus. Let's submit that. He's quite a lot of money. 4.7, that's a lot of money, you know. Varga, okay, let's see what he's like. That was a complete lucky dip. I didn't want to sign anybody crap. We have signed our main target, Jeff Cook. What is he? He's a 69. Okay, that's actually decent. He is 32 in Hungarian. You know what? Let's go to the transfer hub. Can he become a CAM? Because if he can, that could be really good for us. 
How long before you... Oh, four weeks. Okay, do you know what? That was a really good capture. Somehow, we've pulled that one out of the bag. We're still fairly short on numbers. Sean Clare's up to a 67 in midfield, so he'll get more game time along with Gunnarsson and Morgan. We've got five reserves now. Sorry, six reserves now. Plus, we can turn to uh, some youth players because we still got a little bit of money. Plus, we can do deals for like outside of the transfer window for next season. So, you know, this, the quality of the players that we've got is very good. And we're going to have actually an opportunity for some youth players to, to get some game time in the second half of this season. Hopefully this is still enough for us to win the league. I think it should be, but that is going to be our transfer business done. So let's tick down this final hour of deadline day, guys. We didn't get any offers, even though we transfer listed Stockley. So he is going to stay. I wonder whether... We are going to get any offers. We do. We get one for Innes and one for Morgan. Nobody's interested in Stockley, even though he's been superb this season. One of the top scorers and the top assister in the league. We get the Manager of the uh, Month award, which is excellent. And yeah, the transfer window is closed. Let's have a look at our latest Youth Squad monthly report. And we've still got some really good players here. Oh, John Scott can move to a striker. Let's see if that 40 rating improves. Everybody guess in the comments what's it, what it's going to improve to. There are his stats. I reckon maybe like a, I reckon a 50, you know? I'm gonna put it out there. I reckon he's gonna go up to a 50. And he does! Oh my God! I'm actually so clever, bro. I'm actually so good at guessing that stuff. Okay, do we promote any of these players? That is my question. So Cronin is still an, a maximum 91 potential here. Keating as well looks like he could be good. I think we pretty much promote Cronin and Keating for now because they look really good. Sheehan also could be good for us. Maybe we just promote all three of them. I think for now, we'll promote Keating and Cronin and Sheehan, because we've got so many strikers, can just hold off for a second. And that should give us a little bit more depth in our squad. So ending off this episode, we are going to have about seven reserves. Do you know what? That's fine. I, I can live with this. This is fine. So we are still top of the table, guys. We're going to end off today's episode with a game at home against AFC Wimbledon. We're still clear of Ipswich by two points, but Wimbledon have beaten us 3-1 in recent weeks. We now have our newly assembled squad. Claire promoted, if you like, in that position that Gilby was in for most of the season into the starting 11 in midfield. We're going to also replace the change, which is Fanwo, who is banned for this game. I'm actually going to be super controversial and actually bring in Alaire away, who's got a little bit more pace about him. Actually, he hasn't really. He honestly hasn't. 58 pace. Do you know what? No, we're going to go with Lavelle and Innes. It's very slow, but we're going to go with it anyway. And um, yeah, we'll see what these boys can do. Come on. Right, we're going to see what happens on the sim in the first half, guys. We have brought in Jeffka up front for Stockley, which is very harsh on Stockley. And I'm being super harsh on him today, but I do want to see what Jeffka can offer with that 80 pace that he's got. And also he's a lot younger, so he can grow quicker. So I want to get him in that starting lineup as quick as we can. But we're going to sim the first half and then jump in for the second half, probably regardless of the score, just so you guys have a little bit of gameplay in today's episode. Otherwise, it's literally just menus and transfers, which I know is quite exciting in itself. But I, I, just, I don't know. I just wouldn't feel right without putting a little bit of actual football in there. We have a chance here. Claire, let's... Oh, I thought that went in. Good effort. Good effort. Come on. Come on, boys. Jeff Cook out to Britain, and it's a corner. Let's sweep this in. Forster Kasky, Forster Kasky on the second chance, gets it into the box. Dobson on the edge of the box. Turn, someone shoot. Someone please shoot. This low block on FIFA is unbelievable. Forster Kasky out to Leko. Come on, someone shoot. I swear to God. Please, someone shoot. Oh my God. Please, someone shoot. We've got the ball, but just shoot. Someone. Someone shoot. Yes, we've shot. It's Charlie Kirk with a with the goal for Charlton, and he puts us one nil up. He's on an eight point four now. That's brilliant. All right, we finally shot. Well, do you know what? Patience gets rewarded on this game. That is one thing you have to learn, um, and it was absolutely proven there with a goal from Charlie Kirk. Half time, and it is going to be one nil to Charlton. We are going to jump in anyway, and see what we can do. Let's add to this tally, hopefully. Uh oh, here come. What a save, McGilvery. Here come Wimbledon, I was about to say. They fired a shot towards his goal again, and he's made a great stop. They've got a corner now. Woodyard. Get that, Dobson. It's a bit of a 50p head, but we can take the ball and move, hopefully. Look at this from Wimbledon. Chislet. 
Back heel into Woodyard. Innis there to stop it. Let's get a counter attack. Force to Kasky. Come on. Pass it. Out to Kirk. Claire finds a brilliant pass out to Kirk. Is he going to do this guy for pace? He is. And we stick it up. Jeff caught. Unlucky. Almost full time. Is there one more chance for Charlton here? Innis out from the back. Again, they're not pressing me. But I'm just going to try and score anyway. One minute of added time. Lavelle out to Purrington. Big touch. Up to Kirk. Chip it. It's not bad. Jeff Court does get the header, but it's chested back to the keeper. That's got to be full time. And it is a 1 0 win here. Charlton D. Wimbledon. Not much action really on the pitch when we jumped in, but at least I got a little bit of gameplay in there for you guys. That is going to be the last game of today's episode. And look, literally just Craig McGilvery saves. Literally, we just got pummeled there. But a really good performance from Charlton. All sevens with Craig McGilvery getting an 8.6, as well as Charlie Kirk, who got the goal. And it's, again, another three points for Charlton. Big, big three points as well. And that means at the end of today's episode, we are top of the table, still ahead of Ipswich, who are pretty much our closest rivals. Rotherham and Shrewsbury are not too far behind, though. And then the points drop off from Shrewsbury to Sheffield Wednesday is actually huge. So it looks like it's us four going for automatic promotion at this stage. 31 games played, so we're a fair portion through the season now, guys. And we're currently top of the tree. We've got to watch out for Ipswich, though, because they are a good side and they could claw some points back on us, including Rotherham and Shrewsbury as well. I, I mustn't leave those out. But guys, that is the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we have Ipswich again in the quarterfinal of, I think that must be, yeah, is the Papa John's Trophy. So look forward to that. We're going to build our team and hopefully now in the next few episodes, go forward to getting promotion to the championship, dare I say. I hope that happens. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.